Hello everyone, how are we doing today? So today we're going to be going over the anatomy of the kidney. So I took a little video of the models in the laboratory and this is what we have here. We have this, uh, a couple of these are gross uh, models or macroscopic models here. This one's showing the kidneys and, and the uh, bladder down there and the major, major arteries and veins going into them. So this is just a larger model kind of where they are in the body. Uh, then this one here is just a model of the kidney. So this one, we're gonna go into the intricacies of the different structures in here, the different layers of the kidney and so forth. So that's uh, the second step. And then the third step here, this one, we're gonna talk about the major uh, arteries and veins going up through the kidney. Then we talk about the structure of the nephron and how this moves through the kidney and then drains out. And then finally, uh, we go over here to the glomular capsule and we talk about the intricacies of this. Uh, so jumping back to the start here, we're gonna begin by just looking at the overall anatomy of the kidney here. So just looking at this side right here, uh, so we can switch over to the pen. Of course, we have two kidneys. Uh, one is lower than the other. So the um, right kidney is slightly lower than the other. Um, and here at the top of the kidney, we have the adrenal gland. So we talked about that in the endocrine system. So the adrenal gland uh, producing important hormones. Some are involved in the regulation of filtration in the kidney. Uh, we have the renal artery coming in, renal vein coming out. Here is the inferior vena cava, and this is the abdominal aorta. Uh, so the major vessels here, this is in the renal helix or hilum. The hilum is where the arteries, veins, and the ureter come out of the kidney. So renal hilum comes out. This is the ureter then. It comes out now this uh, model here is lacking the, the ureter. It comes all the way down in and comes over here. And this one, the other ureter would come just like that down into the urinary bladder. Uh, I'm not gonna go into the structures of the bladder right here. We're focused on the kidney in this video. So now that's the gross anatomy of the you know the kidney uh, so you have a left and a right kidney of course and these are for filtering the blood and getting the waste out so now let's dive into the kidney and see what it looks like structurally then here i flip it over and there's where it you know this one this model showing it cut in half but it's easier to see on this one right here so let's pause this video right here okay and so starting out we have the outside of the kidney uh, so the outside of the kidney is of course the well, we have the cortex out here, and then it's the fibrous capsule. So it's a fibrous layer on the outside, so the fibrous capsule. And then the next layer in here, so this is kind of, I guess, this region right here, um, if I can draw that a little better. So this is the renal cortex. Here, actually, let me make this uh, slightly better here. So here, from there to there, is the renal cortex. And then the next layer is the renal medulla. And that goes from this spot all the way down into the middle, or like right here. So the renal medulla, and here we have the renal pyramids. These actually form this pyramid shape structure. Uh, and then in the middle here, this is the renal pelvis. So we have the renal, well, the fibrous capsule, the renal cortex, um, the renal medulla, and then the renal pelvis. Uh, so this is where everything joins in together. Uh, so now, like I said here, these form these little pyramid-like structures, which are kind of neat looking, and they have these striations going down them. These striations are actually the collecting ducts as they move down through. As they get down through, they collect in this first little collecting area right here. Uh, these are called the minor calyxes. Uh, the minor calyxes then all drain and combine together. So fluids, so urine, would be coming out right here, that's the ureter. Uh, so fluids are being produced down through these collecting ducts. These collecting ducts then drain into these minor calyxes, which then drain into major calyxes, and then they all join together into the renal pelvis and out the ureter. So pathway coming in, well, pathway going out would be um, collecting ducts, uh, minor calyx, major calyx, uh, then the pelvic, uh, renal pelvis, and then the ureter and then outwards. I just want to make sure I labeled everything I needed. Oh, uh, one last thing. Between these pyramids, we have that part right there. That's the renal columns. 
Uh, so renal columns are just the little separations we have bef between these little pyramid-shaped structures. you got to remember this is a cross-section, so here it's showing nicely how another pyramid would be up like this. And then we have to get the, the vasculature through this region too. And that's what I want to focus on on the next version of the kidney we have here. So that one was a good one for looking at... Um, the different layers of the kidney. This is a good one for looking at the vasculature of the kidney. So let's pretend we are blood coming in. Uh, so we're coming in the renal artery. Now what each of these separations has a different name to it. Uh, the first type of artery is called the segmental artery. So right here would be the segmental artery and then this one branches between the different lobes. So the one that branches between the lobes is called the uh, interlober artery. Uh, so we have the interlobar artery coming up and then it arches out and around. These are called the um, arcuate arteries. So arcuate, think of them as arching around and then they kind of radiate out. We see these little radiation features right here and guess what they're called? They're called the cortical radiate arteries. So it can kind of make sense of how they get their names and then we need to drain coming out. So talking about the venous return, it's just the same names, but you add vein. So you have the cortical radiate vein, and then the arcuate vein, and then the interlobal vein, and then the segmental vein, and then the renal vein coming out. But one unique thing these arteries do is they interact with these little white dots on this kidney structure here. These little white dots are glomular corpuscles. And we're going to look at those in more detail here. You can kind of see one coming up there. And then we show, remember, the really, really zoomed in version of one. But this model right here, I just wanted to show the different arteries and veins as they go throughout the kidney. And then how we have these little uh, glomular corpuscles up here, and they're in the cortex. And then, so some of them are higher up in the uh, cortex. Some of them are closer to those pyramids. Uh, so these ones can jut further in, and some of these don't go as far in. We're going to talk about the differences in the type of nephrons coming up here next. So let's erase this one now. Um, move in now to the next part, which is talking about the actual nephrons. Now this is where filtration is happening and uh, reabsorption and excretion is going on. So here uh, blood is coming up through the uh, cortical radiate veins and out through the little glomular here. So this over here would be the artery coming in to the glomulus. Now one unique thing is that this is an artery coming in, it goes through a capillary bed and also comes out as an artery. It's still an artery there. It's not, it's not our typical capillary bed which goes from an arterioli to a venule with the capillary bed in between. Uh, so it's artery to artery which is a unique thing here and that allows it to be a higher pressure and that's really important for filtration in the kidney because you can actually get more things out because of the higher pressure you can have there since it's not your normal style of capillary bed. Uh, but here we have the blood coming up in, it filters out here through the glomular capsule uh, and then the blood comes back out through the artery. So this is the afferent artery with an A and then this is the efferent artery with an E. So now there are a couple of different nephrons we can have. First part of the nephron is the proximal uh, convoluted tubule. So that's the first part coming out here. Proximal convoluted tubule, sometimes you see that is referred to as PCT. And then you have the nephron loop. It goes all the way down through here and back up. Here you see this thing, this is the descending loop or descending limb, and then this is the ascending limb. Here is the thin section, then here is the thick section. Uh, and then in the lecture portion, we'll go over, or we, we did go over the differences in diffusion of what moves through the thin versus the thick seg segments of the descending and ascending um, limbs. Uh, so here, just erase those lines here so you can see them. Here, you can see how it's much thinner than here, it's thicker up here. And then once it gets back up here, we see this tubular structure change a little bit and go like that. That is the distal convoluted tubule. And you'll see that these distal convoluted tubules run right back next to that uh, glomular corpuscle. Uh, so we, we see that happen every now and then too. And then 
all the so after everything is taken back in or reabsorbed here so depending on your blood volume or current conditions in your body depends on how much you absorb or uh, reabsorb or excrete you then go down through the final process here in the collecting duct and then you go out through the collecting duct so all these little striations we see in these pyramid structures are these collecting ducts and these luponephrons coming down, then go down through the collecting duct and then into that minor calyx, major calyx, and then out. Now, one other different one. So this is called a um, cortical nephron because it's mostly in the cortical region. This one juts, if we come out here, PCT all the way down the loop, it's a much larger loop. This is called a juxta medullary nephron because it goes further down into the medullary pyramids. Uh, now, so these ones are usually surrounded by what's a capillary bed called the vasa vasorum, or not the vasa vasorum, that's in, <laughs> that's in your um, vessels. This is the vasa recta. Vasa recta um, is the capillary bed that is an important part in regulating water and salt movement in and out of these juxtamedullary nephrons. So juxtamedullary, think of it as it penetrating deep into the medulla. And then this still has a distal convoluted tubule, and then it still comes back into the collecting duct. So this um, capillary bed here works along with that collecting duct as well in regulating the concentration gradients we have going down through these medullary pyramids in the kidneys, which are very, very important. So that's just the general structure of a nephron. Uh, so these, these loops here are sometimes referred to as the loop of Henle, or just the nephron loop is fine as well. Okay, so now moving forward in the video here, now we can focus on just the glomular corpuscle. Uh, so remember, on this glomular corpuscle, we have the, oops, we have the afferent artery coming in, or afferent arterioli, and then the efferent arterioli is exiting. So this is an arterioli capillary bed. Uh, there are a few different cell types we have here. Right here, uh, within the wall of the, e of the afferent arterioli, we have these granular cells. Uh, so these granular cells are helping regulate the vasoconstriction and vasodilation of this to control the flow into the glomular and it's um, listening to other cell types that aren't in this but are then around all these capillaries are called uh, mesangial cells or glomular mesangial cells. And then w over here, we have the ascending limb of the nephron. So right here, the ascending limb of the nephron, right here, there are some special cell types as well. These are called macula densa cells and those are also regulating uh, fluid movements in and out and controlling all this process and how much is coming out through here. So all, all these different cell types are communicating together. So now let's say we're blood entering this capillary bed here. Now we have these little white structures with these little grooves in here. These little grooves are called fenestrations. Uh, these cells are called podocytes. They're like little foot-like processes that wrap around this. Um, so these are called podocytes and these are little foots, and then the little gaps here will, where filtration comes out, or the filtrate comes out, um, are called uh, fenestrations. Uh, so these, so the red blood cells come through here, pushes th the things out, and we move our way through. Um, so here, there's also a label on this cell. I think these are just labeling those glomular mesangial cells right here. Um, then also, uh, within this, we have this capsule out here. So this is called the glomular capsule. Uh, so this is the parietal layer, and then the visceral layer is on top the actual capillary. Uh, so this is just a small cell layer thick. Um, and then it all drains out, it pushes out through here, and then comes out that uh, convoluted tubule. So this would be the proximal convoluted tubule, or uh, PCT. And then this then goes out through here, and then down. So just like we talked about before. So this whole part right here is referred to as the renal corpuscle. And then this part right in here is referred to as the juxta glomular complex. Uh, so just a couple different um, terminologies that you might come across here. So juxta glomular complex and then renal corpuscle. But I think I got everything labeled that we needed to label, all the important stuff. Um, that we needed to focus on here. There are also endothelial cells lining this region. All of it's all about communicating and making sure everything is the right pressure 
in the right filtration and you're not losing too much salt or bringing back in too much salt. Uh, so everything is regulated, everything's fine controlled. Uh, renin is released from these granular cells. If you re remember the renin angiotensin aldosterone pathway, all of it is regulated by these little uh, granular cells right here. But uh, we'll talk about it more in the lecture, uh, unless you're watching this after the lecture. You should have already heard about it. But that is all I have uh, for today. So if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'll just play through the ending here. Remember, this is to mimic the laboratory because we're on our little hiatus right now. So I had to take videos, and this is how we're making up for it. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and let me know. Um, but good luck in studying this. Uh, so I hope you all have a great day, and bye-bye.